personal foul number four, Isaiah Jones, his third team six. In for the Lakers, 22 James Wright.
number five, 13, the Tiffany Sparter, is fourth. Team A, shooting two, right. Number one, Beyonce, 
correction. Number 11, Bay of Wanamaker is second, team ninth. And for the Lakers, 23, Ruben Ellis, shooting one and one, falling.
Welcome back. Bay College and Henry Ford College. Game three of the day. Bay College and Henry Ford College battling it out for the first place in the Class A championship that takes place on Sunday. Alongside Chad Toms, Tom Cavanaugh, bringing you all the action for the rest of the day in these next couple of games. We just saw a good couple of matchups earlier today. Last one was St. Clair County taking care of mid-Michigan, but we got another great one right now, Chad. I know that you are very familiar with Henry Ford College. Uh, they, co- they actually beat Mott Community College, the team that you cover, uh, 79-72 in that game. But, can I give me your first original thoughts of this Henry Ford team. They got starters Willis, Hayes, Carter, Gladney, and Bonds. Yeah, they're very athletic. Uh, they're deep. Uh, you know, and it, you look at their record. They're 18-9. and nine, But this Eastern Conference, it's the type of thing where you can slow those records out. These teams, could, they battle. So, I don't give their record any consideration. Uh, they're led by uh, Chancey, uh, Chauncey Willis. Uh, he's uh, averaging 20.3. You've got Demarion Bonds. Uh, he's averaging 15 points, but and he, you know, he, he gives. He's got uh, Bonds has get six rebounds, three and a half assists a game. I, I, they're just deep. They have a lot, a lot of talent. They're athletic and they're just fun to watch. So yeah, they uh, sadly beat our 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 Mott Bears on Tuesday night, and uh, it, but it was a closer game than the score. And say they won by seven. But uh, you know, credit to the uh, the Hawks Nation out there. They got it going this this year, and they're still dancing. But they got a tough test ahead against the uh, the Norse. They're coming at 26 and four. So it's gonna be a battle. It's fun. It's gonna be an awesome game. Bay College, as you said, they were 13 and one in conference play. They lost their last game of the season to Macomb in the MCCAA championship game, 95-85. And Bay College got the first bucket, and they're on their way back right now to the cup. Barrel Mawo on the miss there. It's coming back the other way. Henry Ford rocking their blue jerseys with gray piping and white lettering. On the Bay College side, white jerseys with the teal and green letters and numbers. Here's a wing three. Beautiful shot from Henry Ford. Alden Ritt fills that one up. 3-2. Hawks take an early lead. Yeah, if Alden Ritt can get it going from downtown, he's deadly. Six foot eight from the wing. And he just shoots lights out. So he's, a, he's got a good stroke. Getting That's a rebound right there, too. He's doing it all. Yeah, good start for Ritt. The Lake Orion product. Stepped out of bounds, did what, number two, Chauncey Willis, Jr. And what was interesting about this Hawks team, I caught up with Chris Shepard last game. Uh, it was our last regular season game here in Steve Schmidt Gymnasium. And if you look up and down their roster, you see Tiffin University, Saginaw Valley State, Rochester, Butler University, William Penn, Grand Valley. These guys are, uh, they've got some experience. And it's, uh, so they're not just, you know, we, there was a game we did yesterday and the woman said there was, you know, 12 freshmen. This is, you know, these players here for the Hawks, they've got some Big time experience, so he's built quite a program. Yeah, they say freshmen, sophomores, but there's a lot more of collegiate experience than what shows in those first couple of years. There's a nice shot. Bay College retakes the lead, and this is, you know, back and forth in the first two minutes of play, what we're going to be expected for the entire game. Here's Ritt at the top, kicks it over, curling through the top. And now it's Justin Gladney who stepped out of bounds. That's twice now for Henry Ford. Not keeping their feet, might be wearing a size too big on their shoes on the outside of those sidelines. <laughs> exactly. There. Yeah, Gladly had a great game in that win over Mott, the 79-72 win. He put up 18 points. Uh, so he was a big part of them uh, advancing to this stage today. Uh, yeah, Willis, 20.3. Demarion Bonds, 15.2. And then Rosenberg, he's averaged about 10 points as well. So they're deep. Now, Rosenberg's going to be a big piece off the bench. There's another bucket. Bay College cruising up 6-3 right now. That was the big man, Joshua Ofori, with the jumper. Ofori out of Shakopee, Minnesota, one of many players on this Bay College team hailing from Wisconsin and Minnesota. Yeah, and the thing that jumped out me about Bay College was their, you know, their largest or their, their, I guess, highest scoring average is just under 14. So they've got a lot of guys that can put it up. Missed it on the first try. Second chance is good for Beryl Mawo. He was fouled out with eight points against McComb in that loss. So. For guys, Barrel Mawo and uh, Kari Gadsden as well, they both fouled out against McComb. They want to win this game. Definitely have to limit the foul trouble for those two. Fake the corner three. 
Going to kick it outside. Ritt, he'll set up. Fake the shot. Another kick out, and here comes a turnover. Back-to-back kicks on drives. Mawo on his way to the cup. He's going to reset, and <laughs> nobody on him immediately. Gary Gatson with the ball. He's going to take a quick second, set everything back up at the top. Freshman from Rochester, Minnesota. You know, what's interesting about the North on defense, it, well, they're, they're, they're scoring 85 on, on offense, and they're only giving up 65.7 per contest. So that's lead, that led the conference. So they're a defensive first mentality type basketball team, and you've seen it right there. They're able to step in and get that swipe. That's what's led them to this point and why they went to the MCCAA championship game. What a pass and a finish right there from Shannon Carter. And we got our first timeout on that opposite end. We had a great three-pointer uh, from Bay College. They lead it 8-11-5, to five, excuse me, with 16-10 left to go in this first. But let's keep it here, Chad, and let's uh, kind of just break down today's game and then – or this game right now and then what we have going forward for the rest of the day. We got some great matchups. Hawking and Glen Oaks comes on later. And then at the 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock slate, that's when District B starts to get underway. And, and those games are awesome. But, you know, looking at this one and, and immediately ahead to Hawking Glen Oaks, we spoke with Tim Johnson of Macomb Community College, and he is extremely excited for that Hawking Glen Oaks matchup. There's going to be a lot of fireworks in that one with scoring. Oh, absolutely. And then once you're done with that one, you hit pause for about 15 minutes, and then you've got Macomb County uh, Community College and uh, Alpena. It's just, and it just doesn't stop. Then you've got Cuyahoga and Kalamazoo Valley. So it's just so much fun. This is, uh, you, know, I, you know, I know Steve Schmidt, uh, Coach Hall of Fame Steve Schmidt, our winningest basketball coach in the state of Michigan. I mean, this is his baby. Uh, you know, he's just so proud of this entire athletic department led by Al Perry to have this for the, this tournament for the third year in a row. I mean, it's, oh, there's a big three there. Yeah, no better venue to have it. And Barrel Mawo fills that one up. 14-5, to uh, Bay College hitting the last three pointers from downtown. Yeah, it just means so much to the school and the city. And yeah, just such great basketball. This historic place here. So, yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of it, Tom. Me too. Me too. I, I mean, this arena as well is quite impressive. That's a missed layup right there from Kerry Gadsden. Coming down the other way left to right is Henry Ford. Justin Gladney kicks it into the corner. They're going to reset the offense. Here's Ritt. Deep three. He's got oh, it going on early. He does. Two for his first two from three. He shows out the three ball on his arm as we're five minutes in. Ryan Sweeney, highest scoring on that North team, kicks it out to the corner. Gatson thinking about it, gives it back to Sweeney, who's going into the lane. What a move. Post move, kisses it off the glass. Yeah, Sweeney leading score at 13.7, getting it done inside. And going back to Ritt, I just looked it up. He's averaging – a uh, 34% on those threes. So he's only averaging, you know, just under 10 points. But you're coming in, you're knocking down big threes at critical points of the game. That's just a difference maker. Yeah. And he's taken a lot of them, too. I mean, considering two up front already, and he's feeling it. Offensive rebound for Henry Ford, and the bucket goes. Shannon Carter continues to, to assert some dominance down low. Yeah, Shannon Carter, the ML King product. He's just so physical when he's up uh, near the basket. He's just so strong. It's, it, there's nothing you can do. How about this deep three? Ho-ho, oh, Carlos Scooby Johnson. With a big shot right there from way downtown. 19-10. to 10. And this Bay College team, man, from three-point range, they're four of their first five. 12 of the 19 points from downtown. That's a missed three-pointer in the corner for Henry Ford. We said Bay College 26-4 and four on the year rivaling the 18-9 and nine Hawks of Henry Ford. Yeah, and they tangled with McComb. We'll see them later this afternoon. Look at that. Holy! Oh, my goodness. Joshua Ofori throws it off the window in two-hand jam. Yeah, I grew up in the, uh, you know, the old school era. Of, you know, I was a bad boys fan, and you'd see the Jordans and the, you know, just all those, you know, Clyde Drexler. That was definitely an old the school. The Glide. <laughs> That was before my time, but I still, yeah, I'm still i privy I'm with it. I'm dating myself to everybody <laughs> out there. But, yeah, that was an old-school dunk right there. That was impressive. Wow. 13-15 to go in this first half. 21-10 lead for Bay College. Here's a triple. Rims around and falls out. Rebound comes out to the Norse. Running down the line, Scooby Johnson. Wow. Watch out! Down Main Street! Are you kidding? Joshua Ofori! Six foot seven, 215 pounds. He could move. He led the break. 
This big college team is fired up, and the first one to join them was head coach Matt Johnson. How about that? We're going to take a quick break as Henry Ford settles down. 23-10, 13 minutes left in the first half. Henry Ford trailing by 13, under 13 to play, alongside Chad Toms. Tom Cavanaugh bringing you the action for the next couple of games here from District A. Yeah, wow, what an electric start for the North. They're just getting it done. Monster dunks on two uh, consecutive possessions. Yeah, Joshua Ofori is a a threat to be reckoned with. Here comes Mawo right down the lane right there. Sweeney, he's going to be fouled. And that's the importance of second-chance shots and, and offensive rebounding. From what we've watched over the last couple of days on the men's and the women's side of things, the team that out-rebounds uh, on the offensive side has that edge and is likely going to win the contest just because of the number of shots you're getting up compared to the uh, opposition. Yeah, I think it's a mentality. It's, a, you know, it's definitely a, it's a coached tactic. It's, you just crash the board and do whatever you can. You've got to you know, out will out hustle your opponent. And it, yeah, it just makes such a difference. Those second chance points are just a difference maker. A lot of these games are within a couple of possessions of each other, if not one possession. So it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, we saw that game earlier. Schoolcraft was, uh, it was very close with Mid Michigan for a long time in that game. And, and the game earlier before that. And that was a one possession game up until the very end. Yeah, that's why this is such a great tournament. Henry Ford working it around the arc here. Driving baseline. They're going to kick out to the top. Here's a three off the front from Damarion Bonds. And Bay College off to the races. Mawo with it. He's going to go strong to the hoop with the left hand. Gets it to go. Bay College is dominating right here on the offensive end and picking that ball off of the rim after one shot from Henry Ford. Well, you see just uh, their field goal percentage alone. They're at 69% right now. 11 and 16 from the floor. So, wow. floor. so they're on fire. They've got start. eight total rebounds, two offensive boards. Well, they're just getting it done, 27 to 10. I did not see that coming. I mean, this Hawks team has been playing well. And, uh, but, you know, Chris Shepard's a great coach. He's gotten his team deep in the playoff, uh, you know, in this tournament and then on the national stage. So they'll, they'll claw their way back in this thing. I got I to, gotta, you know, just to watch them play a couple times this year. But this is my first time to see uh, Bay College, and they are impressive. If we know anything about NJCAA Region 12, you know, there's comebacks to be had. I mean, Kellogg was down 21 points at halftime earlier today, and they clawed back and made it a three-point game late. Yeah, the one thing is scrolling through uh, Bay College's schedule, uh, they had, uh, you know, they play, they travel. They play Minnesota teams, looks like New York teams. And the team, the game that jumped out at me was December 2nd. They, uh, they lost to Milwaukee Area Technical College by one. And if I'm not mistaken, they won the whole thing last year. Uh, wow. Yeah, they were uh, and to lose to them by one. It's, this says a lot about this team. At the line for Bay College, Genesis Kemp. Kemp hits the first one. He's averaging 13 a game, but just under 40 from the three-point range. We saw him hit one already today. Kemp one for one from downtown. He's got five points now after those two. A lot of time left here in the first half. 11. 25. So if you're the Hawks and you want to carve into this big lead here, this is you got to go possession by possession. Missed three right there. That was number 12, Daniel Rosenberg. Good shot. It was an open look, and that's what Henry Ford's going to have to create more of. Top of the key, three for Mawo. He's off the mark. Rebound. Hawks. Off to the races, Chauncey Willis. 
stops, pops off the front. Genesis Kemp able to pick it up in the far corner. <laughs> that almost went out of bounds, and those are the type of possessions you've got to be able to keep to one shot. Yeah, Willis had a good shot. He was open inside the key, about a 15-footer, but just couldn't get it to go. Sweeney, crossover in the lane, picks his pocket, does Chauncey Willis. Running into contact, he'll throw something up. No whistle. Yeah, that's surprising. It looked like there was some serious contact there. He kind of slowed down. I thought he was initiating that contact as he was slowing down. You're right. And the ball was out of bounds. It's going to stay with Henry Ford because the rebound came down to Genesis Kemp. He had his foot out of bounds. This is the third time we've had a, a foot out of bounds on a rebound or a catch. Well, now, and you notice in the Mop Bears, they do the same. They wear those bright colored shoes. And, you know, it seems like you want to go the, the black shoes so it kind of blends 100%. in with the lie. They can really see it. I mean, we see some, we got some pink and some bright green shoes out there right now. You're not going to get away with anything. <laughs> Working with the ball. Ibrahim Diakite gets it in side. Now kicked out to Sweeney. His Sweeney, three off back shot. on him. There's an offensive rebound. Oh, no, the, the Hawks able to come away with it. Willis to the cup. He misses. And now a foul on Willis. He's taking a beating down there in these first couple of possessions going strong to the hoop. Yeah, that's just his character. I mean, he's a good kid. Uh, he's, you know, he's from Detroit. He's a top kid, so he's going to try to put this team on his back. I mean, he's their, he's their captain, uh, averaging 20. So, yeah, he's going he's gonna to try to get the job done at the line, get his team fired up. and get. They're down by 19 here in the first half, which is so surprising. Chauncey misfires on that first one. He's a 65% free throw shooter, transfer from Saginaw Valley State uh, University, and he was actually high school Mr. Basketball. He, <laughs> Mr. Basketball, along with, uh, Carlos Scooby Johnson as well, number 11 for Henry Ford. Second yep. one's good. 29-11. What a run for Bay College. They have scored almost every single time down the floor. Genesis Kemp gives it to O'Forey. Yeah, they're just shooting lights out, start this thing. Oh, they, they've slowed or, or kind of lowered their percentage down to 61%. <laughs> That's a way off three. Ibrahim Diakite, too strong on that one. Willis taking it himself, and this is what Chauncey Willis is going to have to do, put the ball in his hands and make an impact. He's got the last three points right there, 29-13. Yeah, it's just what the best players do. When, it, when the, the chips are down, they just step up and make a play. Here we go. Pass over to Ritt. Underneath the basket, he's going to kick it out. Willis, triple, a little bit short. Offensive rebound, though. Comes out. Wow. Samarian Bonds has it taken away. And a foul called on Henry Ford as Karee Gadsden was trying to cross the timeline. He called on Alden Ritt, his first foul with 9.13 left to go. Yeah, it's pretty actually, uh, you know, fairly physical game so far. But, yeah, this uh, four total fouls. I heard in the earlier game there was up, upwards of over 50, I think, in uh, – the, the earliest game yeah, today? <laughs> I think there was in the 35-40 range for sure. Yeah, I verified uh, at the table. They said it was over 50. You see, Yeah, it was, they looked up the record. <laughs> we had three technical fouls, and oh I my think, goodness. yeah, I, darn near 50. Uh, it there might have been 50 score. plus. <laughs> and then game two, it was let the boys play. We might have had, as you said, you know, three or four on each side in the second half. So. Going to the line, Bay College will be there. Up by 16 points. Kareek Gatson. First one misses, just rims around. Gatson out of Rochester, Minnesota. Just under 11 per game. He said he has to stay in the game along with Mawo. who both fouled out against McComb in that loss. Connects on the second one. It's a 17-point lead once again. For Bay College, they're cruising through the first half so far. Let's see if Chauncey Willis and the Hawks have anything to say about it. Here goes Willis. Kick out to the corner. Oh. In and out of the hands of Ritt, and he drops it. He Turnover. got the handle there in the corner. I think he was probably shooting before mm -hmm. he actually caught it. Sometimes, I mean, when you're in that corner there and a, a defender's really close to you, you've got to get that shot up quickly. I saw a lot of times yesterday in the women's, uh, there were some three-pointers that were hesitant to be taken because it was taking too long for them to go up with the shot. Sweeney, he's going to kick it out to O'Forey. He drives the post. Swatted away. Nice block. Carlos Scooby-Johnson takes that away. 
going to stay with Bay, though, as Sweeney's going to take it out underneath the hoop. Yeah, you look, you look at that matchup right there. As mentioned, uh, Afori at 6'7", 250, and Johnson 6'6", six, six, at 210. So that's a heavyweight bout right there. Kemp misfires on the three. Henry Ford, trailing by 17, need to make up some ground here. There's Willis, a little push off. And gets the, the bucket to go. Shooter touch, got it to go. He's starting to heat up. He's got five now. Willis, five, right behind Alden Ritt, who has six. Just a pair of triples for Alden. And Joshua Ofori with eight. Beryl Mawo has seven. Sweeney with six. Ofori in the near corner along with Sweeney. Can't give Sweeney any room to shoot from beyond the arc. Here goes Kemp. A little bit of English on that layup. He gets it to go. 32-15. Using the glass. Love it. Willis behind the back pass. Scooby Johnson for three. Bang. Nice shot from Scooby. And uh, I think this Henry Ford team is really starting to heat up, and this second half is going to play a lot different than the first 12 minutes. Yeah, they're starting to, to really chip away at this lead with some big baskets here. You just see him, I mean, you talk about the uh, – the Norse with their shooting percentage. I mean, they were in the 60s. Well, the Henry Ford Hawks are at 30%. So, they want to get back in this thing. They got to start getting shooting, getting better shots, and they're starting to do that. And that's a good – oh, wow. I thought it was going to be a charge. So did I. I. I was talking with Tim Johnson yesterday, and I think all those calls are pretty much just coin flips, you know, because <laughs> you never know. It can look perfect as a defender. That referee is either going to give you the charge call or he's going to call you for the block. And it's really no – I mean, unless you're standing on that arc inside the paint, I can never tell what the, dif- the difference between the two. So That's funny, Tom. I thought it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's, that's – I mean, there, yeah, I there's got to be some guru that knows the difference between the two. But that looked very clean. And uh, ball don't lie claps from the Henry Ford bench right there as he misses short on the free throw. Yeah, that's a uh... – it's a very tough gig. You know, I do a lot of the high school games. I do the college games. It's a, you know, it's just a thankless job. So I give these guys so much credit out here calling or refereeing these games. And, and uh, you know, it's most more times than not for a love of the game and just trying to make a difference. And, and uh, the referees, I think, do a, a good job. You know, it's you just, it, they just especially at the high school level, it's, you hear it all the time. It's people yelling at the refs. So I think it just has to stop. I agree, and we're getting different crews every single game, so it's always different, and I think that, that's, that's good for each one of these teams considering uh, how things get consistent. There's a missed three from Ritt. It's going to go down off of the hand of Henry Ford battling for an offensive rebound. Scooby Johnson knocks it out. Yeah, Bay College is playing a good defense. They're contesting the shots, and as we talk about Henry Ford starting to heat up a little bit, Bay College is standing firm. They're just they're they're uh, they're matching up and they're really making it difficult to get those shots up. So they're, they're I mean they're clinging to an 18 point lead right now. It's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, Bay's not going on any sort of a run right now. But you're right. They're keeping pace. They're playing steady ball, and, and that's all they really need to do at this point. Out by so much. Yeah, Henry Ford. They just can't match baskets. They really got to put a run together. Good pass from Kemp. No look bucket to Ofori. Wow. Yeah, what an assist. It's just too easy right there. That's just the defensive breakdown when Kemp's able to dribble drive into the lane. It's two on one in that situation there. Nothing for the defender to do. And that's a big three. Nice shot from number two, Chauncey Willis Jr. He's helping his team out. Yeah, you see him out there talking to his teammates like, let's go. We got this. I mean, there's 25 minutes of basketball left here. Willis has eight after that triple. 17-point drought for Henry Ford. We're going to step aside just for a second. Regional, Region 12, District A semifinals coming at you in just a minute. with the ball, five and a half to go in the opening half. 
between the Norse and the Hawks. Ibrahim Diakite had it. Now gives it over. Ezra Brown has it taken away. Henry Ford got to make up some ground here. Willis just hit a three. Can he get another? Off the back of the iron. And that falls out of bounds over the side of the backboard there. Good call from the referee. We're going the other way. Yeah, is, that, is he forcing a little bit too much? I know he's trying to get his team back in. He just knocked down a three. Coming out of, the, uh, out of that timeout, they forced a turnover. Yeah, that type of play when you want to, you know, take it yourself and put the game in your hands, that's, you know, five minutes left in the second half down 17 points. So, you know, there's still a lot of time to come back in this game, as we saw uh, cutting a 21-point de- uh, le- uh, deficit down to three for Kellogg earlier today. So these teams can do it. And 18-9 and nine on the year, Henry Ford. They can score in bunches. On the way to the rim, Diakite misses on the layup at the end of the shot clock. Scooby Johnson, left to right. They'll give it up to the top. Willis, full head of steam to the basket. Oh, just he just misses on the floater. He's, he is taking on this game over. I think he's got to get his teammates involved. Yeah, Ritt has been quiet since those opening couple of shots. He's two for three from the field, or from three, and those are all the shots that he's, he's taken so far. But yeah, I think between Willis and and Johnson, I mean, they, they can really get a – they get Rick and that's short. Tipped away. The second chance try from Willis is rejected. With numbers now, Bay College, the Akite on the opposite end. They swing it around near side of Kemp. Ofori in that corner, backing down his man. A little hook shot. He gets it. Wow. Joshua Ofori, 12 points so far. In this first half, wow. Yeah, he's feeling it here in the first half. But we just looked up. He's averaging 12.3 on the season. He's already at that mark today with four minutes left here in the first half. Willis broke on that three-pointer off the front end. Kemp gets the rebound, and we've hit the four-minute mark in the first. 19-point lead for the Norse of Bay College. Wide open. Kerry Gadsden fills it up. Timeout taken by Bay College after that make. 22-point lead. Yeah, I'm speechless. It's not very often that I'm speechless, Tom. Uh, I can talk to anybody about anything, but I don't know what to say. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just shocked at this uh, this Henry Ford Hawk team. Uh, they're just uh, – I mean, I I know – once again, we talked about the records and all of that kind of good stuff. They college is getting it done. They're almost putting them to sleep. They're just being effective on both ends of the court. And if you're Hawking College or Glen Oaks, they're in the crowd right now getting ready for that next matchup. <laughs> If Bay College finds a way to get out of this one with a win here, one of those two teams is going to have to play those guys. So uh, I'd be watching this game with raised eyebrows seeing this Bay College team put on the type of uh, offensive onslaught that we've seen so far. Yeah, they just, they're making it look easy. They really are. They're finding the open man. As we mentioned a, a four, he's getting it done down low. So, yeah, this has been an impressive start for the Norse. And that's, you know, coming off that loss against Macomb, too, it's a, you know, credit to their coaching staff for just, hey, forget about last week. Mm-hmm. That game doesn't matter. Let's just start. I mean, this is when the season starts. So, that's, uh, you know, good coaching right there to keep their players level-headed and ready to uh, hopefully, and they're, for their sake, advance. I agree with that, though, because it can be a really a, 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 just a mental, you know, just a weird thing for you if you lose that last game in the championship. You really kill your mentality going into that tournament, but you see teams all the time. That's not going to count after the shot clock violation. It's going back down with Bay College after that long stint. But, I mean, you, you look at some of these teams in the uh, March Madness tournament at Division One. they might lose in, you know, I guess their respective league. But as the seventh seed in the conference tournament, they go all the way and win it, and they're in the field of 68. So you know, a team like Bay College, even though they didn't win the MC. CAA, they got a really good chance to go to the national tournament and win that thing. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, considering the score you gave us earlier, only lost by one to the defending champions. Yeah, Under- I've seen another game. I think they scored 137 points, if I'm not mistaken. That is true. Yep. Uh, I think that, that jumped out at me as well. <laughs> and it, That's not even with overtime. That's in a 40-minute contest. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was against Kalamazoo Valley, I think. Uh, let me see. Maybe I'm Going to the line, it's going to be Daniel Rosenberg from Burnsville, Michigan. He's transferred from William Penn University. Chad, you already mentioned a lot of these guys transfers from other schools. You got Sterling Scott from Tiffin, that's a Division II in Ohio. William Penn University for Rosenberg, who hits the first free throw. 
Uh, Demarion Bonds, he went to Rochester University, played right around his hometown as he was from Pontiac. And Alden Ritt played at Grand Valley State. He's from Lake Orion. GVSU is a really good squad as well in that GLIAC conference. And then as well, Chauncey Willis from SVSU. He was a big piece of that team as well last year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as, you know, Coach Shepard, he does a good job in this conference. And obviously you got a lot of talent, but I mean, that equates to a lot of sophomores. So he's going to get, I'm sure as soon as the season's over, he's going to be out pounding on the pavement. But, <laughs> you know, that's the thing is you, you set the bar high and you got to, you got to continue on with that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I'm sure he's built a lot of great relationships at the collegiate level as well. And it's, you know, with the, the transfer portal now, it just, it really kind of changed the dynamic of college athletics. If I, my mindset is if you're a college coach, you're a great recruiter, especially at this level because it's only one or two years. Mawo misses the original chance. He gets his own rebound and flexes as he runs back, 45-23 to 23 with two and a half to go in the half. And Mawo getting it done off the glass. Those second chance points are just so huge at this, at this point when you've got a plus 20 lead. Ritt pump fakes the three, gives it back out. Inside the arc, Willis driving baseline. It's a cross pass here, short corner jumper. That's good. Nice shot there from Sterling Scott, who we just got done talking about. So they're going to need to do, start knocking down some shots, get a stop. Big possession here with two minutes to go. I mean, if you're the Hawks, you want to try to chip away at this, get it somewhat manageable before you head to the locker room at half. Hey, you're not going to be able to cut this in half by the end of this first half, but just something that's workable something for that to build on. Get right. a block, get a steal, draw a charge. You know, even get a rebound. Don't give up an offensive board. Well, that's not going to help. How about that three from Kerry <laughs> Gadsden? He's feeling it. He pump faked, kept one foot on the ground as his other foot left into the air, and he still sunk it. On the opposite end. Scott that's... answers. Nice answer there in the corner. Curling Scott's got his last two shots right there. A little corner, and now a corner three on the opposite end. Still a 20-point game, though, as they trade three-pointers. Ball's at the top in Ryan Sweeney's hand. Genesis Kemp is double-teamed. We've got a 2-3 defense that's being rotated around right here. Sterling yep. Scott. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if they make any changes at the half. Uh, what, you know, do they switch over to more of a man? Or do they stay in the zone? Oh, Forey with another drop. Right there. He's got 14 points. Hardy exceeding his per-game average, and he gets a rebound here. Playing lights out with 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, he's been impressive. And we talked about this I, I, in our game last night with Tim Johnson. He came on, and we talked about, you know, I gave him credit because he just does, does such a great job at Macomb, keeping the stats up and making sure everything's up to date. And the same thing here, Ma, we just really try to make sure we have a game-time experience. You've got Grandma's at home. You've got parents. But most, not most importantly, but importantly, you've got college coaches watching this game. Yeah. So we really want to highlight all the great things that these players are doing here. Missing the three in the corner was Gadsden. It was an air ball with 9.9 left. And, yeah, even though there's some college coaches that are here in person scouting these players, you know, because we have the live feed and we're able to provide coverage, uh, they don't need to drive the hour and a half or so, however long it is. Uh, to be able to scout these guys. Yeah, technology's definitely helped out those coaches. <laughs> are, I'm sure they used to be road warriors. Now they can jump on their phone. They can watch any game in the country just about, uh, especially even at the high school level. We uh, broadcast our, our Goodrich basketball games, where both of our teams are still alive in March Madness, by the way. But all those games are uploaded on NFHS. For, for 9 bucks a month, you can just click in. I watch games all over the country. It's wow. amazing. So, yeah, I'm sure that's really changed the uh, – plus you got the huddle cams and all the footage. When I was uh, growing up, I think he had to send in VCR tape. To, to <laughs> Jeez. That's a, bu a bucket at the end of the buzzer. Are they going to count that? They do. It costs two bucks to send out a tape to a coach. Yeah, what a first half. Wow, 20-point lead by the North. And, uh, you know, their front court is really getting it done. I mean, you talk, we talked about a Afori, but you got Mowell with 13 points. Uh, Gadsden with five in the backcourt. So, yeah, just a balanced attack for the North. So, those, that was an impressive – First half of basketball, I think I've probably seen all year. I mean, they're halfway to 100. I mean, this is a lot like what we saw in uh, the first game of the day. Kellogg was trailing to Lakeland. Lakeland. The score was 51-30, to 30, very close to what we have right now. And that game finished up as a six- or seven-point final. So Kellogg pushed all the way back, cut it down to three. That's all that they got it to. But you never know. These 20-point leads can 
kind of fade away quickly depending on your team. But we're going to take a quick break, 14 minutes until we come back for the second half of action. Dad Tom, Tom Cavanaugh, bringing you class at region 12. Di- Sorry. <laughs> no, I caught, talked over you. <laughs> no, region 12, District A semifinals, the first spot in District A. We'll be back in just a few minutes for the second half.
Second half underway alongside Chad Toms. I'm Tom Cavanaugh. Henry Ford starting with the ball and uh, immediately Brian Sweeney getting his hands in there. So, uh, Chad, from your perspective, watching this Henry Ford team, what is the number one adjustment that the Hawks need to make to be able to mount this comeback down 20? They got to start making some shots. I mean, they're they're top three players. You know, they're led by Willis, Bonds, and Rosenberg. They shot uh, very poorly. Uh, Willis, 4-14 for 10 points. Uh, Bonds was 0 for 6, and Rosenberg 0 for 2. So I think they just got to get comfortable, get in a routine, get in a set, start knocking down some jumpers. Yeah, that Kellogg team earlier today that uh, almost closed in on a 21-point deficit, they didn't go on a large 12-0 run. They had a couple 7-6-0 runs that were kind of gradual throughout the half. So you don't need it all at once. They just need to uh, match the baskets, as you're saying, and be able to just make some shots down the stretch. And some big threes would really help this team, too. Yeah, I agree. And then on the other side, though, if, if, if Henry Ford's going to get back in this, they got to limit the uh, the shots by the, the, the Norse. Before, he was 7 to 10 in the first half. But Mawa was 6 to 10. So they're just getting done from inside. So they got to get some, some key stops in the paint. Back in transition, Willis has the ball, fakes the wing three, going to drive on a two big men, has to kick it back out. I mean, it's really tough trying to drive the lane with those guys in there. And there's Mawo that's able to take away the rebound on a missed shot. That time it was Damarion Bonds. He's 0 for 7 right now, uncharacteristic of him. Genesis Kemp, second chance, no good. Chauncey calling up his teammates for numbers. Here's a corner three off the glass. No good there, and it's going to come back to Bay College. Gary Gadsden at the top. Yeah, I'm going to look and see what the uh... – the Hawks shot on the season, percentage-wise, a 47%. Yeah, I don't think they're anywhere near that in the first half. Oh, no. Yeah, they're about 31%. And they're 47% from the field. They average 90 points a game. And uh, they have about a third of that right now as the 40s at the line. This is the front end of of these two shots, 18-28, just a minute and a half into this second half, and nobody's scored yet before he's going to get his first chance. Yeah, I think if they, uh, they going back to what the Hawks need to do, if they're going to be successful, obviously it starts with Willis to start making some shots because he's got to elevate his uh, his teammates. You know, uh, Willis is averaging close to seven assists a game. He's got to get some other people involved. We talked about that in the first half. Yeah, that's a great point. Here's a rebound after another missed free throw from Ofori. He had an incredible first half, and now 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Nice shot and a make from De- De- Demarion Bond. He had to see that one go through. That's his first make of the day. Let's see if that starts to roll something over for him. Shooter's got to keep shooting. Yep. And it's good to see that go in if you're a Hawks fan. Top of the key, Mawo. Spin move in the lane. Stripped out. That ball is in the air. It's going to stay with. Bay College is going to strip away. They're going to be a, it's a foul. Oh, they're calling a foul on Bond. Hmm. That's one of those those calls where it just it looks like it could go either way from our vantage point. Looks like he got all ball, knocked it loose. But they're putting uh, they're putting Mao on the line. I'm actually surprised they thought that was a shooting foul. I, I think he might have gone up with the shot, but might have been stripped of the ball prior to him really muscling it up there. He yeah, misses I, the front end of the free throw. Yeah, I think by the time he got in a shooting position, the ball was already – had been jarred loose, so I don't. Yeah, I'm not going to question any reference, especially <laughs> on this broadcast. But uh, and it, you know what? I sat down at the table. I did the uh, the in game announcing uh, for a year here at my. It's a different experience. We're way up here. We're we're, we're removed from the floor. <laughs> when you're down on the floor, it's a totally different. Game. Oh yeah. No, the size of these guys to us. I mean, it, it's not even close to what it is when you're down there on the floor. That's that's the biggest thing I've noticed from just having it being up here for the whole day. Yeah, just the sound. You get the coaches and the bench chattering, and yep. and uh, there's just a lot more, uh, you know, things going on as you get closer to the floor. So, two minutes and 15 seconds into the second half, 51-32, huge lead for Bay College trying to make it to the region or to the District A championship of Region 12. Awesome. What an offensive rebound! Third chance, and finally the foul coming in there for Daniel Rosenberg, but. Yeah, that's the the type of fight that we need to see out of this Henry Ford team, getting multiple chances at the rim. Rosenberg, 6'6", 190. already mentioned, he's transferred from William Penn. Five points and seven rebounds 
against Mott in their win in the quarterfinal. Yeah, he was really a difference maker. Able to hit the first one. So even free throws, the Kellogg team earlier, going back to them just because of how impressive the 21-point comeback was, even though they didn't win it all, but both free throws connect there. A lot of those free throws can pay dividends down the stretch. You don't need a three-pointer or a fadeaway shot every single time down the floor. Those free throws can really help cut into that lead. Yeah, it stops the clock, and it's a uh, you know chance to get put some points on the board. And then you can set up the press coming out of that uh, if you know if you're if you're smart about it. So it can turn into some steals and some you know fast break opportunities. Marion Bond kicks it over. Sterling Scott's three is short. Collision between oh. two teammates and timeout being called by Bay College. Yeah, it looks like Gatson got uh, I think poked in the eye by Mawo. They were yeah, both when he going was going the by there going for the ball. Scott was trying to get the loose ball. Oh, and man. I don't know if it's a contact lens situation, but that or going to be okay. But, you know, sometimes you get scratched. That's tough to overcome. I mean, it, when I played back in high school, you know, I made sure to uh, not cut my fingernails for uh, a couple of days before game day. <laughs> Just so, I mean, I didn't play the best defense, so I got away with it a little extra because nobody wanted to uh, <laughs> check me up or anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A little bit of a claw there. But hey, he seems to be just fine. You see head coach Matt Johnson communicating with his entire team. Very fired up. He seems, I mean, this is our first time covering Matt Johnson and this North team, but he seems like even up 20, 25 points, he's going to bring that same amount of energy to his team and keep them motivated throughout the contest. Yeah, and they're no stranger to this gym. They made it to the championship game last year. They uh, took on the Mob Bears, and uh, that was a it was an impressive game. Uh, by the Bears. They were the District 8 champions, but uh, North gave them everything they could handle. Full press here for Henry Ford. Breaking it are the Norths. Here's O'Forey's floater. Can't get the roll, and we got a push foul. Going to call that on Henry Ford. Just checking in also for Bay College. It's going to be number 32, Cade LaFavre. And he's going to get called with the foul as soon as he's in right there, and I guess Henry Ford will have the ball. I thought that was the other way around. You know, did a lot of basketball games in this gym, but I don't think I've ever had uh, players from Burnsville, Minnesota on opposing rosters. But you got Daniel Rosenberg from Burnsville as well as huh. LaFaver. I wonder what's going on up in uh, in up in Burnsville this <laughs> afternoon. We got the entire town probably just, you know, hanging on our every word. <laughs> There's a corner three, and it's a big one. Huge shot right there. Daniel Rosenberg. Speak of the devil. <laughs> Light it up for Burnsville. 14-point game. Yeah, they got to be going nuts at the moment. I wonder how many stoplights are in Burnsville. <laughs> I think mostly hockey players up there, I would imagine. Morrow at the top, being guarded heavily by Chauncey Willis, Jr. Getting a screen. It's going to be Ezra Brown into the corner. There's a bucket, but a foul and a whistle before the made basket. Yeah, I think that's going to be on Bond. Yep. Yeah, you see uh, the uh, just the the effort, just the uh, the overall, just I don't know, maybe uh, knowing that the season's on the line, there's 16 minutes left. It seems like the Hawks will come to life a little bit. I mean, they're down; they've cut it to 14. Sweeney, yeah, tries to use the glass there and a rebound to Barrel Mawo. Offensive rebound galore here for Bay College to and the rim and a, another foul. Yep, hard foul there. Mawo just taking a strong move to the basket. Second, third chance shots all day long so far for Bay College have led to a lot of extra points. And that big stat, seven points off of turnovers, five turnovers for Henry Ford. It's minimal, but Bay College has taken advantage of that. Free throw is made on the front try from Barrel Mawo. He's got 15 now leading all scorers. Yeah, Mawo is now two of four from the line in this game. I mean, he's averaging over 60%. Second shot from Mao rims out. Picking up the tempo, here are the Hawks. Bond drives to the rim, pulls it back, will take a jumper. Very short. Rebound. Second, third chance try. Yeah, Malachi, nice play by Malachi Black. Yeah, he's, uh, he's finally on the score, scoreboard. His first basket of the game. 15 minutes left here in the second half. It's surprising, but 
He's got to get it done in the paint. He's averaging about seven. This shot from Mawo, his second chance. No, another offensive rebound to Ofori, and that's a foul. And if it's on Damari and Bonds, he might be out of here. Or not out of here, I just mean off the yeah. floor for now. But it's on number 12. That's going to be on Daniel Rosenberg from Burnsville, Minnesota. Hawk just got to box out. They got to get some boards. They're giving up too many offensive opportunities here. Second chance basket for the North. Before he gets the favorable roll. And that's kind of been the difference. Henry Ford's not doing a terrible job of battling back in this game. As you said, cut it to 14. But when you're allowing on those last two possessions, five different shot chances and two different fouls, that's going to lead to some extra buckets right there. Ofori cashes the free throw, coming in as LaFavor or Ofori. Yeah, Hawks sitting at five fouls already here uh, with 15 minutes left to go in this ball game. That's a, that's a tough number to overcome, so they're going to have to play clean here on out. They did get it down as many as 13 or 12 points. So they're going to have to play smart defense. Moving it at the top, both wings. Bonds in the corner, launches a three. He's short on it. Mawo, he's going to get it up quickly. Ezra Brown, and one! Smack in the back of the glass was Malachi Black trying to reject that ball. But Ezra Brown finishes with the left hand. Nice play. Yeah, good head play there by Abaro. Uh, to get the basket to go, he knew that Malachi Black was, you know, thundering down on him. He was right there. So he kept his head, got the basket. He's going to head the line. He's a good free throw shooter as well. Brown from Appleton, Wisconsin. Another one of those freshmen on this team, four total freshmen for Bay College. And they don't have the largest lineup of guys either. There's a shot made. Three-point play completed for Ezra Brown. It's now 57-39 in favor of the Norse. Yeah, just when you thought the Hawks were going to kind of claw their way back into it, get to a manageable deficit, they're inching up towards 10 points. Quick bucket. Nice shot from Rosenberg. He's been on fire in the last couple minutes, and it's going to be a timeout for Chris Shepard and the Hawks. We'll step away briefly. 57-41 with 14:43 left to go in this one. Be back in a minute. You're listening to Mott Community College Athletics YouTube page. Coming out of the timeout, Bay College having to break the press. Henry Ford almost took that one away. Here comes Gadsden down the lane. Doesn't get the shot to go. LeFevre almost with a rebound, and Barrel Mawo sneaks that one out. Hawks finally got a rebound, then they gave up the ball. Loose ball picked up by Mawo. And that is going to be an offensive foul. Well done by Justin Gladney to slide in front and take that charge. He looks a little, he looks fine, but. Uh, grabbing that right elbow, went down hard on that. Yeah, season's on the line. He's stepping in when he has to. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that stuff tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were talking earlier. I mean, you have an off day in between if you get a win because these guys don't play again until Sunday for the championship. And contrary to a lot of uh, Division One and Division Two conference uh, tournaments, they play every single day. There's no rest. Yeah, you know, we talk about Henry Ford's experience. Other back-to-back District B champions, 
2023-2022. So they know what needs to be done. They've been in plenty of these games. Short corner shot. Not going to go for Gladney. Rebound comes out to Mawo, and Ezra Brown's going to set up the offense. We got an off-ball foul going the other way. That's on Cade LaFavor, his second. Yeah, Hawks are at 15 to 50 from the floor, so they're going to have to inch up that shooting percentage. Check that. That's three on LaFavor, so that sideline's one of their big men, and Ofori's going to come back in, but they definitely not complaining about that considering the type of night Ofori's had with 16 points leading all scores. Yeah, he's been solid. It's been fun to watch those monster ducks. Uh, put the one off the backboard and put it down. That was that was awesome. And there's a triple. Gladney gets one to go from the corner and a whistle before we set things back up. I don't know what happened there. They wave off the basket. There's a, oh, they called an offensive foul on Black. Wow. You had Henry Ford running down the court like they had just sunk that triple. And you're 100% correct. Barrel Mawo is going to head to the line uh, for one and one at the moment. Yeah, now up to seven fouls for the Hawks. So, wow, what a turn of events there. With 1341 left. First one's good for Barrel Mawo. He now has 16 points. He's 6 to 12 from the field, 1 to 2 from three point range. Yeah, and he's averaging over 60% from the strike. He's got a good shot. High arc. Uh, Mamo also 6-5 as a wing, which is uh, the NJCAA level. That's very impressive. Well, that was a five-point swing there with the Hawks making that three-pointer. They got pulled off the board, and Mao knocking down both those free throws. It would have been close to a single point. or a, Yeah, it would have been about a 10-point game. Yeah, you had it at 14, and uh, just a couple shots. is able to cut that down to single digits. And here's a nice shot. Sterling Scott knocks it down. Scott's now got seven, starting to heat up. He's had a good second half. Still a long way to go. There's another foul, but it, it, Henry Ford still somewhat in this game. It's a 13-point game with 13 minutes to play, and that's a questionable call. Henry Ford, their fans and head coach Chris Shepard hate that call right there. And Gatson at the line, he's shooting 66%. First one is good from Gadsden. A little bit of foul trouble on both sides right now, especially for the team total on the Henry Ford side. Second free throw, bounces around and falls. Yeah, they're uh, close to 70% on the season. They're a good free throw shooting club. And those are just those points you need if you want to get to the, to the next stage. The final championship game on Saturday. You got to get knocked down the free throws down the stretch. What a pass from Chauncey Willis and rejected right there was Omar Ziegler. Oh, nice hustle there by Willis to get the ball back for the Hawks. Going right to left again. Ziegler, cross pass. Willis, triple. Off the back iron. Rebound from Gladney. Henry Ford staying with the ball. Good offensive rebound. The 15 point game. A couple big shots here turn the tides completely. Willis in the paint, looking to get something up. Feeds it down low. He's got a man, Malachi Black, finishes strong at the rim. Well, that's a good way to get that uh, shooting percentage up, get it in tight, and finish at the basket. That's exactly what Malachi Black did. 12-15 remaining in this one. 13-point game at 61-48. to Wow, a lot of contact there. I didn't see a foul call. Now Sweeney missed the shot and a wrestle for the ball and a whistle. We're going down the other way. Well, I was surprised there. Definitely looked like some contact as Sweeney tried to back down in the lane. I think he was working on Scott. I agree, but, I mean, you mentioned it earlier. They're letting them play in this game here. So these guys, uh, they're going strong to the rim without fear of being called for those whistles. And as a a defender, having that confidence that you're not going to get called for every single time you touch a a, a guy shooting the ball, uh, it makes for a better play there. There's a whistle, and we're calling a charge. Oh, wow. Sweeney, that's, that's a textbook charge all day. Yeah, he got his job done. Credit to Sweeney standing in and taking that. Because that was a huge possession for the Hawks. They had, the, had a little bit of momentum. They're trying to get within that, you know, 10-point uh, deficit. And Willis, you know, maybe trying to do a little bit too much. 
tried to take it down the lane, and he got called for the charge. Sweeney really does it all for this team. He scores at a high clip, but also sacrificing the body. And a traveling call. A lot of back and forth here without much scoring in these last few minutes. That was Terry Gadsden who gave that one up. Checking in is going to be Marion Bonds. He gets in for Omar Ziegler. Chauncey Willis, still your leading scorer on the Hawks side with 10 points. Daniel Rosenberg has nine. Sterling Scott, seven. Top of the key, three. This cuts it to 10. Rosenberg, big shot, 61-51. And in nine minutes, they've cut the lead in half. Yeah, closest this ball game's been since probably about the four-minute mark in the first half. Here's Genesis Kemp to the rim. Pops out. What a good shot oh, there. Almost got basketball. it down. And probably off of Kemp there on a knee or a foot. You know, we haven't seen in the second half is uh, is Carlos Johnson. Yeah. And it looks like he's got a brace on. He still has his, uh, hasn't uh, gotten rid of the warm-up yet, but a lot of minutes in the first half, it felt like. A college needs a timeout with yeah, 11 to minutes. go. I don't know. Maybe a tweak to his knee. It's a big right. part of the offensive game plan to start. He was. He, he, I mean, as a former Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan, he's definitely going to be a big part of that uh, game plan. But I, I think you're right. Once we saw that brace on the left leg, I, I think he might be done for the day. You never know, though, because this is conference tournament time, and guys will fight through pretty much anything to play. The Bay College, uh, I, I think it might just be the shooting and a few offensive rebounds that have really plagued them because this is not a – even though down 10, you're making some ground back, Henry Ford still has nine team fouls. So anytime uh, a whistle is blown against them, Bay is going to the line, and that's going to start to stack up down the stretch if the Norse can make their free throws. Yeah, if I'm, a, if I'm Coach Matt Johnson, I just kind of set up – a simple offense, just kind of get it inside, get it even into the post, try to get some of those big guys. You know, you got Mao, you've got uh, Ofori, just, you know, back them down, and, and uh, they'll spend a lot of time at the line here in the last 11 minutes. And Matt Johnson of Bay College is not going to allow his team to uh, go lackadaisical in this second half. Uh, we, we saw Kellogg earlier make a 21-point comeback, uh, ended up losing in that one to Lakeland. And Matt Johnson, just how fired up he is on the bench over there, he's going to keep his guys dialed in at all times. Well, we said the last possession was a huge one. They're down 10 right now. Alden Ritt, he's got two threes on the night in the corner. Watch out for him. It's Willis at the top right now, working against Sweeney. Shifty moves from Willis. Here's Bonds for three. Rims around, can't go, and we got a foul again. Going to figure out which side it's on. I think it's on Ofori. Yes, it is. Josh's first foul, luckily, is one of the bigger guys uh, right now on the floor. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah, credit to the Hawks. They're crashing the board. You've seen Rosenberg. You've seen Black do whatever they can to get that, uh, that rebound. So, kept the possession here. They got a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Getting close to 10 minutes to play here in this ball game. It's just huge possession. This is fun. Game can go any way, too. I mean, 10 points in a college basketball game like this is really two or three uh, in, in, in any other stage of a game somewhere because a couple of big threes uh, can bring them right back in it. We're going to get a conversation between officials here as they're talking about this foul call on Ofori. Yeah, what's surprising is uh, in this game, uh, the Norse led the conference in three-point percentage. Seems like they've been pretty quiet from downtown. Though. Front court getting the job done for them. Rosenberg just hit a three beforehand, misses this one off the back iron. We're under 11 minutes to go in regulation. 10-point lead for Bay College. It was once 20 at the start of the half. Mawo driving in, spinning, gives it down low. No foul there as Gadsden tries to put it up strong. And a whistle right on the baseline. Nice job there by Ritt to keep his hands straight up, able to knock that ball loose without getting called for a foul. Going to stay with the Norse, Ryan Sweeney, underneath his own basket. A lot of time this game is going to develop a lot more in the next half. Look inside the camp, and there's a ramp, wraparound foul on Alden Ritt. It must have just hooked his hand around as that entry pass was coming into Kemp. 
second foul for Kemp, and now Norse in the double bonus. Kemp's going to be able to shoot two calm ones now, not have to take the front end. And he'll sink the first one. And, and this is uh, kind of the point I brought up earlier is w w that was not a shooting foul right there. That's on the floor, but still Kemp, who's a great free throw shooter, is going to the line for a couple free buckets. Yeah, Kemp's at uh, close to 76%. So if you're the Hawks, you want to keep him off the free throw line. He nailed both right there. It's back to a 12-point lead. Just over 10 minutes to play. Bonds, along with Willis Jr. at the top, setting a screen. That was Shannon Carter. We haven't seen him in a minute. Inside to Carter. Two-hand jam. And the foul. Genesis Kemp can't believe the call on the foul, but standing at the line waiting for, for his free throw is Shannon Carter. Yeah, two big points right there. Opportunity to make a three-point play. Carter averaged nine on the season, been relatively quiet today. I don't think we've called his name much, so but he's uh, stepping up with it, coming up on the 10-minute mark. Three for three from the field. Now he had four points before that bucket. Make it seven now for him. And it's now a nine-point lead. Trying to break the press. Sweeney along with Gadsden across the timeline. They get it. Kemp in the corner. He's double-teamed. Moving it around the outside. A lot of cutters here. As Ofori goes to the cup, he's fouled. Ball, good strong take from up top. Took it all the way down into the paint. Got fouled. He'd be heading the line shoot two. Ofori reminding me a lot of what we saw in the earlier game in Isaiah Jones of St. Clair County Community College. He had 19 points, and 15 of those, 14 of those, were strong drives to the basket where he, he was just going up strong and kissing it off the glass perfectly. And that's kind of what we've seen from Ofori. Yeah, he's got the post move, but he's in there finishing strong at the rim. Yeah, absolutely. Isaiah Jones, no stranger to this gym. Played uh, high school basketball just down the street of uh, Kyron Ainsworth alongside Makai Ellison. Huh. Yeah, Imagine he's a if strong those two on the player. same team again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've tangled uh, over the years, the last two seasons, or here in, in this gym for sure. Rosenberg misses that three. Now a 10-point game. Gadsden, he's rejected. Tries to save the ball to Ofori. He's looking to pass it out. Resetting the offense now is Bay College. 9.20 to go in the game. 64-54. Carter actually got a block and just couldn't pick up the loose ball. Credit to the Norse for keeping alive. Sweeney has his pocket picked on the, on the takeaway. Here's Rosenberg. Oh, no. He misses the jam. Oh, my goodness. Packed by the rim, Mawo to Kemp. Kemp missed the three. Second chance, Gadsden with the offensive rebound. He misses. And coming down with the rebound is Damarion Bond. All right, we'll see if Rosenberg can uh, recover from that. He's a big-time player. I'm sure uh, he, he is going to keep shooting. Willis, step back three, off the mark. Rebound, Kemp. A breakaway dunk situation. And he was packed by the rim. Look at Genesis Kemp out of nowhere. Over Gadsden to finish. 66-54. High flying Genesis Kemp. Yeah, another offensive board for the, the North. They've got 14 offensive rebounds in this game. Willis in the corner along with Gladney. Goes between the legs. Driving to the middle. Gladney stops, pops, into contact. He'll shoot just off the back iron. Offensive rebound from Shannon Carter. And he's going to the line. Love the battle we're seeing from Henry Ford College in this second half. Got to hit a few big shots here down the stretch, but also want to limit the fouls that we're seeing. You still got to play tough defense, but uh, keep those hands uh, away and straight up when guys are shooting, which is easier said than done. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the physicality of a Mao of, uh, you know, a 40. These guys are getting in there quick. They're strong. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough not to follow those guys when they're coming at you like a freight train. Checking into the contest. For the scores table, it's going to be Malachi Black. He's going to come in for Shannon Carter, who's shooting another free throw. Misses the second free throw, so Black is going to have to wait to come in. We've hit the eight-minute mark. 11-point lead for the Norse of Bay College out of Escanaba, Michigan. 
Hawks looking for a stop here with eight minutes to go. North just looking to keep doing what they're doing, just creating op- offensive opportunities in the paint. They can draw fouls by just going to the rim as well. The check out Mao here, doing the same thing. No foul call. He misses off the back iron. Here's Willis in transition. Floater in the lane. Kind of tipped in the air by Ofori. Good defensive play. Here's Gladney in the corner. Gives it up. Driving to the rim, Sterling Scott. He's off the mark with his shot, and we got a tie-up and a foul. Yeah, nice effort there by Bonds to go up and get that rebound. Yeah, that was just all effort right there. He got it a split second before the defender. So he's going to spend some time at the line. Exactly what the Hawks need here. They're trailing by 11. Clock is stopped at 723, so these are big free throws yeah. coming up. That's the best thing that can happen for Henry Ford right now. The ability to score points with a, a paused clock. Bonds averaging 65% on the year. None bigger than these two. He snapped on the first. Nice shot by Bonds. Ten-point game once again. It's kind of been wavering around there since the 10- to 12-minute mark. It's been a great half so far for Henry Ford. They worked hard. They've made shots. They played good defense. Second one's up. Rolls around and pops out. Yeah, they've outscored the uh, North by 10 here in the second half. Breaking the press with ease. Sweeney gets it into the middle to Mawo. That was a questionable pass. And Ofori with the jam. Just an underhand little scoop to Ofori who put it down. Kick it out to the corner, swing it around. Gladney has his three-pointer tipped by Sweeney. Bonds puts up a shot. Another tip to the basket, and Kemp comes with the rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Carlos Scooby Johnson, who uh, we're glad to see in the game with that brace on his left leg. He's back in. We're under seven minutes to go. Not a lot of time, but it's also a 10-point game. Anything can change. Well, Kemp now with 10 boards to go along with his 11 points, so nice game for him. This North team or Bay College looking to to advance to the finals on Saturday. That's back-to-back double-doubles for Kent as he had 21-10 and 10 against McComb in their loss. Ezra holding it, gives it back to Kemp. Down screen coming up for Ezra here. Here's a shot from Ofori. He'll miss way short. And here's Chauncey Willis. Top of the key, thought about a three-pointer. Bonds fakes it, goes to the rim. Floater, good! And that's the key. You know, we, we talk a lot about Chance, Chauncey Willis. He's averaging 20 points on the season. He's at 10 points right now. But in it, So it's like there's some games where you just not have it, and you just got to work on getting your teammates better. And they did exactly that right there. Make sure you distribute the ball to the right person, and they got a basket. Right. And he's, he's got 11 assists with that, too, which is, I mean, that's just being an incredible ball player uh, without putting it in the hoop. Yeah, there's no, no surprise that uh, this team has uh, gotten as far as they have with, with Chauncey Willis at the helm and he's going to make everybody better around him, especially here in the second half. There's six minutes left. Mawo going to the line in a 12-point game. Errol Mawo tied with Ofori with 19 apiece. Couldn't finish off the end of that and one for Barrel. Yeah, everybody that's on the floor for the North is shooting over 60% from the strike. So it's up to, yeah. you know, kind of be uh, selective there and who you're trying to foul. The kick out from Rosenberg is Haywire. Out of bounds. Back on the baseline. And it's still a 12-point game, giving the Norse the ball back. Henry Ford still trying to stay within this one. It's very in reach. 12 points is not a ton. But with under six to go, well, shout out to all the 179 tuning in online. We appreciate you. Probably got some Minnesota fans and, and Wisconsin. We got Detroit. <laughs> we got uh, fans from all over the country. So thank you for tuning in here. This historic Jim Steve Schmidt Gymnasium, Flint, Michigan. Ibrahim Diakite drops it off for Kemp. Sweeney deciding what to do. He's going to dribble in. Shoots a little floater, and he's fouled. Wow, he's fouled with two seconds left on the shot clock. He needed to get that off at the last second. and I mean, that, that, that's one of Sweeney's, you know, good shots right there. Like we said, it's our first time covering this team, but I feel like those runners in the lane from a guy that scores 13 and a half points a game, uh, that's a shot that he takes very often. I like that. Yeah, he just uh, he knew exactly where he was going to go. He picked his spot on the floor, 
and he just timed it perfectly. And uh, yeah, the shot didn't go, but he got fouled. That's a uh, you know good opportunity to add to this lead for the Norse. And Sweeney, he's averaging 82 percent on the season. So that was just a, a you know best case scenario for Bay College there. Yeah, I mean that's a crazy stat. Uh, you mentioned 60 percent from all the guys on the floor just from shooting free throws. Uh, those are free points that are not, you know, that could be taken away and, and fed back towards Henry Ford, but Bay College is doing their job. Sweeney misses the second half of that one. It's a 13-point game with five to go. Inside look, three defenders around Malachi Black there. That ball is knocked out of bounds. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, the 26-4 and record for Bay College come in, they shoot well. You know, they're averaging 85 points a game. They defend well. They're giving up only 65 points, a plus 20 there and they knock down free throws. I mean, those three categories, you know, and they, and they uh, you know, I'd have to look at their, their rebounding stats as well. It's, there's no surprise that this team's coming in the top of the uh, of their conference in the, up north. Kent in the corner for three, much too short off the front of the rim. Here's Chauncey Willis, 11 assists, 10 points. Off the back iron with that three, gets his own rebound, has to kick it out, gets it to Gladney. Resetting the offense here. Nice he got by Willis to keep it alive there. Uh, pure effort. I think we got a whistle. No. <laughs> so we got a, 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 oh, a technical. I'm sorry. I thought they called a timeout. We're going to get a technical away from the ball here uh, on Bay College. So Damarion Bonds is going to shoot free throw here. And just to close out that stat with the uh, the Norse, they are at, they're plus 11 on the rebound margin. So that's just uh, a testament to their athleticism. I mean, recipe for success with all those numbers coming through and, I'm really excited for uh, tomorrow's matchup. If Bay is able to get there, they got to take on Glen Oaks or Hocking, and those are two firepower programs with some good scoring as well. So, I mean, when you're shooting the ball as well as Bay is, facing one of those two teams, if they're able to get there, uh, that'd be huge. Yeah, we've got a treat coming up. We've got a couple great games uh, this evening. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, I, we, uh, I've called a few of the Macomb games, or at least one of the Macomb games this year. No stranger. They're no stranger to the gym. So, Macomb and Alpina, and then KZ and Cuyahoga. Bonds, he'll shoot a triple. Just off to the left. The putback jam. Holy! Daniel Rosenberg out of nowhere with the right hand throws it down. Yeah, he's six foot six. He put it down. Straight up jump. <laughs> that was impressive. Timed it perfectly. We'll take a break. We're back we'll, to 10 points. Yeah, 4.30 <laughs> to go. It's been looming around 10 points for the last seven minutes of gameplay. You're listening to Mott Community College Athletics. We got a ball game here between Henry Ford College down 10 against Bay, the Norse. We're back here with 429 left to go alongside Chad Toms. I'm Tom Cavanaugh finishing the rest of this one, and we'll be on call for Hocking and Glen Oaks next. Well, Ezra Hawks Brown. Got it back to 10. Yeah, Let's see a- if they can get a stop here. Hawk Nation probably sitting, uh, if they're not here in the gym, I'm sure they're watching it on their phone, their iPad, or probably beamed up to their, to their big screen. Going to the rim, Gadsden. That's a blocking foul. Gadsden went down hard. He's on the floor. Oh, he's holding uh, maybe an ankle. Uh, he's up. He might have might have got caught in the undercarriage, as they say. 
that could be the case. I, uh, I, I was thinking right ankle, and then I saw him stomp both legs on the ground. I go, well, if his legs are hurt, I don't think uh, yeah. he's smacking him on the floor. So I, let, let's, take, let's take the third option. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 404 left to go, and that's a missed free throw. The best news for Henry Ford is they all clap it up on the court. 71-61, and if you're the Bay College Norse, this is where you want to be free throw line and you want to continue to draw contact so getting to the rim is kind of how they're going to play the rest of this game out in my mind missed the second free throw oh four he fought for the rebound but it comes out to bonds and the hawks picked off by sweeney bonds through the interception sweeney misses the layup and glenn he's able to clean it up and get it back for the hawks wow nice job there by bonds get back on defense and really disrupt that easy basket without Creating a foul as well. Great athleticism by Jamario Bond. Malachi Black going to set a screen or try to. He's back down there on the block. Ball is in the far wing now for Chauncey Willis. Going up with it. Hits the underside of the basket. And Meryl Mawa was hurt. It looks like they're going to call a foul on Willis, I believe. As Meryl Mawa fell to the ground, both of his legs went opposite directions. He's going to need help. The yeah, trainer there for Mott is uh, – Oh, he's – wow. Sorry to cut you off. I cannot no. believe he's walking right now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a gamer. He's staying in. From our vantage point, the angle of that fall and some of the expressions yeah. and the shouts you kind of heard from the crowd, that was a really nasty fall. But Barrel's going to go shoot two free throws here. Uh, what a dog. That, that's incredible. Yeah, no, so Will is pleading his case. It looked like he uh, – was on the bottom of that pile. So they must have seen something from down low where he uh, took the legs out for, for Mowell. I mean, that's what it looked like. He was going down and then kind of sweeped out, and his legs kind of split open a little bit. Awkward fall, but it doesn't mean a thing. He nails the first free throw to go up by 11. Yeah, impressive. Uh, just, I guess, what's the word? Uh, you know, tenacity, uh, you know, all of yeah. those big words you can throw out there. Uh, just some gutty play there by Mauer. He's a gritty guy, you know. He plays the game like that. Chauncey with the ball, bringing it up the court. He's got Bonds right behind him. Going to kick it to Bonds, who gets the screen. Yeah, Hawks is really having a tough time getting inside that 10-point barrier. Now they're chasing 12 points. Chauncey getting inside. Looks like he double dribbled or carried for a minute, but misses the layup. No turnover there, and Mawu's got to have to evade a few defenders. Gadsden brings it up the floor with three minutes to go. I think he's going up for the shot and just kind of rolled off his hand. There's Mawu working on it on the left, right wing, excuse me. Sweeney. Will he shoot? Going to the rim. Spin move. Has the ball still. He'll make it at the cup. Going to the rim is just how Bay has been playing this game, and the amount of points in the paint, incredible. 32 of their 75 points in the paint. That's a blocking foul. Going to the line are the Hawks. Yes, we need relatively quiet. Got uh, nine points now, but just getting it done down the stretch in the paint, like you said. Stars today for Bay College, Evan Barrel Mawo, 21. Josh O'Fori has 19. And Kerry Gadsden with 12. But four guys in double digit scoring for Bay College, I mean, that's how you get it done. You share the rock and you're able to spread out scoring 10 or more points across a lot of guys. Yeah, absolutely. And on the other side, we talked about Willis. He's only got 10. Uh, Rosenberg's actually got 16, so he's, a, he's above his average. Uh, but Bond's sitting at six points. Still it's averaging 15. He's minus nine. 12-point game and almost a takeaway. It will be a takeaway. Willis, he'll finish on the right side. Down to a 10-point game now with two minutes to go. Check that 12-point game right now as it's 75-65. Under two, Mawo at the top of the key. Sweeney up near half court. Bonds all over him. Was asking for an Ofori screen. Is he going to get it? 
foul on a reach in from Bond. Headed to the line is Ryan Sweeney. Yeah, Sweeney got out to about as far out as he could, stretched out that defense, was able to get around Bonds and got that call. So he's heading to the line. Sweeney, he's uh, from the Detroit this year. He's averaging 82%. So nice play there by Sweeney to get to the line. Nails the first free throw. Continues to cushion that lead. 76-65. Nothing but net. Ryan Sweeney automatic from the charity stripe with a minute 40 to go. 12-point game again. Rosenberg's three is short. Offensive rebound. Gladney. He'll pull from deep. Short again. Gladney. One more time. No, he won't take it. Chauncey's turn. He's on the wing. Step back. Air oh, just off the front of the rim. And finally a rebound comes out to Barrel Mawo. Yeah, look good the whole way. Just a, a short. Nice job by Mao to clear that for the north. Coming up on one minute to play here. Winner of this will take on Hawking College or Glen Oaks in the next one. Kemp with the lay-in. And that might be the dagger right there with a minute and two seconds left to go. Genesis Kemp finishes at the rim. 79-65 with 60 seconds to go. Inside pass. Shannon Carter missed the bunny. Rosenberg's got it in the corner. A few more chances. They got to pull three-pointers. Gladney, short again. Here's Chauncey Willis from way deep. Kemp gets the rebound. 35 seconds, and he's fouled, and that's close to all she wrote here from Bay College. And you can see Genesis Kemp is spent right now walking down to take some free throws. He played his behind off today, and so did the entire rest of the Norse club. Yeah, just a tough shooting day for the Hawks. Uh, we talked about their uh, – their their percentage. They're now under 30% in the game. They're only 21% from the three point, uh, on their three-point attempt. So just a tough shooting day uh, coming in this thing. We talked about 47% from the floor on their uh, and three-point average is you know, 33%. So just weren't falling today. You know, I guess give credit to the North defense. Made some of those shots difficult. But so we watched this, uh, this, this Hawk team. Uh, I've watched them twice against our uh, Mott Bears. Actually, three times. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they shot well all season. And that's sort of uh, kind of what happened. It, it, we talked about it earlier with Mott. They played Henry Ford, shot well, and then went to Henry Ford, and they, they just didn't have a great shooting day. And that was uh, kind of why they fell off and, and lost in the quarterfinal there. But Bonds gets a bucket with under 30 seconds to go. Yeah, there's teams that you can shoot poorly. You can find other ways to get it done. And, uh, you know, maybe at the line. But against uh, Bay College, if you're shooting poorly, uh, it just they're just a tough thing. Too tall of a task for and most it, teams. Yeah, against a big college team like this that is so good offensively, uh, it's tough to compete with right there. So it's 80 to 67, 13 point game, and with 17 seconds, you got Bay College, their bench clapping it up, and Gadsden's at the line for a couple free throws. But uh, before we finish this one up, you know, let's kind of preview this Hocking College Glen Oaks game later on today. We have Hocking at 21 and 6, uh, taking on the 18 and 10 Glen Oaks Vikings. This is going to be an awesome game. We already knew the fireworks in scoring were going to be awesome. Both teams pretty average in uh, scoring per game. And they, both teams with some really nice players. Darius Roach, Bolivar on the Glen Oak side. And then Anthony Milner and Dennis Osoro. Osoro with 16 points per game for Hen- uh, Hocking. Excuse me. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's just, you know, another uh, quality matchup. Uh, you know, and this one was, you know, kind of the exception to the rule. You talked about the earlier game where it was a bit of a, uh, a margin, and then, uh, you know, they were able to come back. This one actually, you know, credit to Bay. Uh, they they, they kind of what's, uh, what's, what, what's, uh, stood tall, I guess, in that Hawks run down the stretch, but uh, they were just too much for the Hawks to handle. Your final score from Game 3 today at Mott Community College. This is Game 1 of District A. Game 2, their opponent will be next. The winner is Bay College, 82-67. to 67. They were awesome. 40 points combined between Barrel Mawo and Josh Ofori. Mawo with 21, 15 rebounds. Ofori, 19 points, 6 boards. Harry Gadsden, he had 14, and so did Genesis Kemp. Genesis Kemp, another double-double, 14 and 11. And I think your player of the game, uh, Chad, I think it's got to be Barrel Mawo with 21 points and 15 boards. Yeah, I agree. He just got it done. He got it done down the stretch and from the free throw line, crashing the board, in the paint, both sides of the court. 
So it definitely credit to Mount credit to the entire coaching staff, Matt Johnson and his assistant coaches. They came out with a really good game plan today. And as mentioned, they were the number one three point shooting team in the in the conference, but they got it done in the paint. I mean that was they really the, did that's good coaching right there. They went to uh, you know, they probably seen those matchups and uh, they figured, Hey, we gotta get it done inside, we gotta get our big guys going if we're gonna advance and they did just that. Henry Ford they made it close in that second half, really battled hard. And we got a couple of the Norse players coming up to jump on yep. the radio broadcast. Sweeney Actually, and I remember Ophoria. talking to them last year. <laughs> they were in this gym when they, uh, we, we had played, they played a, a good tournament last year, and they came up short in that championship game. So they know what it takes to get there. They, uh, they just punched their ticket to the District 8 championship game Sunday afternoon. It's going to be a lot of fun. Daniel Rosenberg, 16 points on the Henry Ford side, did all he could out of Burnsville, Michigan. and that oh, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota, my bad. That's yeah, okay. 82-67 is your final score once again. Bay College takes down Henry Ford and will play Sunday at 1 o'clock in the District A Championship. We'll be back in 15 minutes for the next game. Hawking College and Glen Oaks. Chad Tom on the play-by-play. Myself, Tom Cavanaugh, taking over on color for the next one. And Chad will take you the rest of the way for the 6 and the 8 o'clock slate tonight. We're excited. Way more basketball to be had. We'll be back in 15 minutes. 82-67. Bay College advances. Big night for them. We'll see you soon. This is the Mott Community College Athletic Phase.
DJ and the VA. Look, we're on the show here. Yes, complete director of the VA. So that's basically 